is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 toyota sequoia courtesy of younger toyota in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we're in this one because this is a beast of an suv shares the same platform as the tundra and the land cruiser it does have three rows of seating so of course you gotta love that as expected and you do also to get two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance then as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2024 sequoia first one being the sr5 starting at 61,275, limited for 67,675, platinum for 73,865, trd pro starting at 79,110, dollars and the capstone being the one we are in today actually starting at 78,265. dollars by the way that was all pricing for the rear wheel drive with the exception of the trd pro that comes standard with four-wheel drive but if you wanted to add four-wheel drive to any of those other trim levels simply add three thousand dollars then to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the sequoia is going to be the same powering the beast is a 3.4 liter twin turbo v6 hybrid putting out 437 horsepower 5200 rpm 583 pound feet of torque coming in at 2400 rpm powered center rear wheels or all wheels through a 10 speed automatic zero to 60 time approximately 5.6 seconds that's plenty respectable on paper there mpg numbers then coming in at 21 the city 24 on the highway for the rear wheel drive 19 city 22 then on the highway for the four wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel believe it or not that would surprise me but so anyways before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the sequoia i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's actually a couple buttons located just behind the shifter so drive modes will include eco normal sport and then there's a separate button for the tow and haul mode as well adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity so now have you got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the sequoia here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right got it in sport driving mode i can already tell you this thing just wants to go with three two one Yo! Ah. <laughs> All right, for it being as big as it is, yeah, you're not gonna have any issues emerging onto the highway. 0 to 60 and 5.6, it's actually pretty darn impressive, especially for the size of this SUV. So, certainly no issues there. There was a little bit of a delay at the very beginning, so there was a little bit of turbo lag there. Uh, it kind of depends on the vehicle, really. You don't always get that, but sometimes you do. In this case, you do get a little bit of that, but overall, definitely plenty quick for the size of this thing no doubt but to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important so up front you will find 13.9 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13.6 inch ventilated rear discs as far as that 60 easier stopping distance goes that comes in at 134 feet which quite honestly is a little bit on the higher side of things but let's go ahead and test the braking feel just real quick here and that is on the softer side of things so as expected it feels like 60 is here when 134 feet and i guess that makes sense with the platform that it rides in uh essentially the same thing as the tundra so typically larger trucks do require a little more stopping distance as far as that 60 is here number goes so typically what i look for in a three-row suv is like well, at least 120s so a little bit on the higher side of things but it's all good but then touching on suspension and handling it is going to differ pretty substantially dependent upon the trim level that you go with actually so up front you're going to get an independent double wishbone type front suspension in the back coil spring multi-link rear suspension but if you were to go with that trd pro trim level that's actually going to add a lot you're going to get an off-road suspension with bilstein shocks fox internal bypass coilovers rear remote reservoir shocks and then also a trd pro front stabilizer bar as well but then there is an optional suspension configuration only available for the platinum and the capstone like we have today that's going to be an adaptive variable suspension and an air ride suspension it's kind of a, a combo kind of deal there for you but anyways that's probably going to be the smoothest ride without a doubt because the adaptive variable suspension that monitors each shock absorber individually not only adjusting to the road imperfections 
suspensions, giving you a smoother ride, but it also tightens up the suspension during heavy cornering, giving you a better handling, giving you the best of both worlds, essentially. And then the air suspension is gonna give you that cushiony ride as well. So when you combine those two, that's the best possible setup for the smoothest ride humanly possible, really in any vehicle. Like that's the kind of suspension setup that the Mercedes-Benz GLS has. So I'll just put it that way. But overall, my short little test drive here today, ride quality has been perfectly fine. I certainly haven't had any issues. This is the perfect road trip vehicle, I guess you could say. As far as steering feel goes, I like it. It's definitely weighted a little bit on the heavier side of things, not too heavy, uh, but it's not a loose steering feel either, which is traditionally what you find in SUVs. So I definitely don't have any issues there as far as cabin noise goes we're going 40 miles per hour right now i think it's a very serene cabin in my personal opinion i'll let you guys be the judge through my road mic though but that's due in part because there is an acoustic laminated front windshield that does come standard actually for all trim levels across the board but in addition to that the capstone is actually also going to give you acoustic laminated front door glass so that's typically an option on luxury automakers, but it does come standard here in our capstone at least. So that is gonna give you the best serene cabin that, that you could possibly get essentially. Then touching our rear visibility with the third row down, which is what I have right now, it's actually not that bad. Now I can imagine with the third row up, typically the headrests are gonna kind of impede visibility a little bit there, but for what I got going on now, it's really not that bad. Rain sensing windshield wipers though, they do come standard on all trim levels across the board. So whenever the Sequoia detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn those on just like automatic headlights basically. And for the capstone only, I am actually looking at a head up display, kind of hard to see with sunglasses of course, but without them, it's showing me a compass, it's showing me what gear I'm in, it gives me my speed, it also gives you speed recognition and safety features projected up onto my windshield as well so that's pretty cool assisting with full visibility yet again but that pretty much has out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Toyota Sequoia all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 Toyota Sequoia finished in celestial silver in case you were curious of our exact exterior color name that we had on this one with us here today but as always let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the VIN first character is the number seven and actually that indicates that this one is built and assembled here in the U.S. so in case you were curious but starting up front front grille is going to differ substantially dependent upon the trim level that you go with actually so for the sr5 you're going to get a black front grille with the horizontal bars uh gray front grille for the limited dark mesh front grille for the platinum going to get toyota lettering spelled out horizontally for that trd pro and you're going to get kind of like a chrome accented or silver accented front grille with our capstone that you guys are looking at right now of course you got the blue kind of highlights to the toyota emblem since this is a hybrid after all it's what Toyota does. But of course, then to the sides, you got LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. You get the automatic feature. You also get automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there. So you got to love that. LED fog lights actually do come standard for all trim levels across the board. You guys can see those down below there. Definitely looks good. And then you get some premium LED headlights for the capstone that we have with us here today so it's like a quad beam kind of setup it looks pretty darn cool if you ask me though i didn't have that last time i reviewed this car so i like it but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end i like it it looks a lot like the tundra of course but let's not go ahead and swing around to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of this one roof rails do come standard the crossbars that we have up there they are uh added accessory i should say uh rear privacy glass also coming standard you got the gloss black a pillar also coming standard for all trim levels across the board automatic power extending running boards these things are pretty darn cool that comes with the platinum they're optional on the premium but essentially whenever you open the door i'm gonna try to actually show this to you guys so hang on real quick i'm gonna actually open the door and then i'm gonna show you guys that it takes a second but they actually come down and then when you close the door same thing they're gonna fold right back up after giving it like two seconds or so but anyways got that capstone badging found on the front doors there that looks good as well taking a look at the side mirrors they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated with led integrated turret signals then take a look down to the wheel setup yet again differing depending upon the trim level that you go with so for the sr5 you're going to get 18 inch alloys for the limited and platinum you're going to get 20 inch alloys then for the trd pro you're going to get 18 inch forged aluminum bbs wheels that's pretty darn cool and for our capstone you're looking at 22 inch alloys so pretty cool design very high-end looking design i'll put it that way but 
That pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and swing around to the back. All right, and so now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, you actually do get a matte black shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Just below that rear window wiper, of course. LED tail lights, they do come standard for all trim levels across the board. Got that Sequoia lettering spelled out horizontally. That is either going to be finished in chrome or a matte black, depending upon the trim level that you go with. Um, in case you were curious about the towing capacity of the Sequoia, that comes in at 9,520 pounds. One of the cooler things about the Sequoia is I'm going to walk up a little bit closer here. There's actually kind of like this almost hidden black button right here. If you press that, that actually opens up the back, the rear glass. So it's kind of like the Forerunner. I guess the Forerunners is a little different setup. So I'm just picturing like going on Aztec Island or something and like backing this thing up to the beach and just looking out the back end like that. that. That is so stinking cool. But anyways, that's how that works. But then just below it all, you will find a single exhaust outlet. It is tucked away. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, super now since we are around to the back of the Sequoia, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is actually a power lift gate for all trim levels across the board. So you absolutely have to love that. There's a button on the key fob. Of course, there's a button on the lift gate itself then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 22.3 cubic feet behind that third row. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, bumping that up to 49 cubic feet behind that second row. And by the way, power folding rear seats here on our capstone so that was pretty darn cool but then with all rows folded 86.9 cubic feet so essentially the same cargo space as a toyota highlander or honda pilot or something like that but led cargo lighting back there you gotta love that 120 volt power outlet for the limited trim leveling up that was pretty darn cool to see that there's also a multi-level cargo shelf system back there you guys can see the kind of the three little notches on both sides to kind of change up that shelf so that was kind of cool a little bit different than i'm used to seeing but then making our way up to the third row legroom that comes in at 33.7 inches that's actually not bad for a third row for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there cool thing about the third row though is the second row can actually slide up to six inches forward and backwards so if there was third row passengers you can actually adjust the second row pretty substantially to kind of make a little more space for the third row passengers so that was pretty cool but rear ventilation does come standard of course you got couple um got several cup holders there for those third row passengers as well along with usb charging ports i love seeing that and you actually also get third row side window sunshades that's definitely a rarity you don't see them often so gotta love that but then make your way up to the second row legroom 39.2 inches for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the second row there so plenty of space for me heated second row seats for the platinum and capstone trim levels you got some charging ports back there of course second row window sunshades for the limited trim level and up as far as the bench versus captain's chairs go the bench seating is going to come on the sr5 and limited captain's chairs are going to essentially be found for all other trim levels across the board so i was kind of a fan of the captain's chairs that was pretty darn cold you also get a couple cup holders and a little bit of storage in between them if you needed it as well so then make your way up to the front seats fabric trim found on the sr5 soft text upholstery for the limited leather seating for the platinum trim level and up you're going to get memory set for up to two different drivers for the limited trim level and up power adjustable front seats with power lumbar for all trim levels across the board and if you're looking for heated and ventilated front seats you get them both with the limited trim level and up so overall as far as seat comfort goes plenty fine in my short little test drive here today it's absolutely no issues there but now let's go ahead to take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for all trim levels across the board and it is heated for the limited trim level and up and the 10 and 2 grips perfectly fine that bottom grip though that is a thick grip so that was pretty darn cool to see but so then making our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your toyota logo on the bottom lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate there but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that bright blue engine start button located just by the driver's right knee and so 
Once started up, there is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster that does come standard for all trim levels across the board. There are some steering wheel mounted controls where you can scroll through different things that you wanna check out, like how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's a compass up there, radio information, different safety information and so on. So pretty much everything you could possibly want up there. Wouldn't have minded a bit more customization, but overall, I think the gauge cluster looks pretty darn good. But so then making our way to overall interior quality, a power moonroof is gonna come on the SR5 limited and TRD Pro trims, but then a panoramic roof coming on the platinum and capstone. So second row passengers get a view of the sky there as well. LED interior lighting for all trim levels, wireless phone charger for the platinum trim level and up. Home link controls for up to three different garage doors found on the bottom portion of that frameless rear view mirror. That is actually gonna be for all trim levels across the board. Gotta love that overhead sunglass holder. Just saw that up there as well. That's pretty darn cool. Overall, as far as interior quality goes, it's pretty darn good just because this is the capstone like even the grab handles up here are wrapped in leather you almost never see that got the capstone lettering found uh just kind of through this wood trim just above the passenger side glove box a lot of nice stitching in this one i love the light leather with the dark wood you got a lot of dark wood surrounding the shifter here gloss black finishes overall they did an amazing job with the finishes quite honestly and again i think it's because this is the capstone like even the door handle has a nice weight to it. And that's something I don't think I've ever said before, but a lot of times door handles are very light and they just feel cheap. But in the Sequoia, it feels heavy duty, man. Like I'm a big fan of that, but anywho. So you got your wireless phone charger up front, just behind there, a couple cup holders. And within the center armrest, there is a ton of storage. You even have coin holders in there, a couple USB charging ports as well. So overall interior quality definitely is very nice in this thing. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. You're gonna find it eight inch color touchscreen display for the SR5, 14 inch color touchscreen display for all other trim levels across the board, Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay also standard, but it is wireless. So no pesky wires there, you gotta love that. You can check out some driving statistics up there if you wanted to, along with your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. You're gonna find eight speakers for the SR5 Unlimited, and then a 14 speaker JBL sound system for the Platinum, TRD Pro, and Cap. Stone. So having said that, we guys say, let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one. Yeah, that's dang good. That is a dang good sound system for the Sequoia without a doubt. Plenty of bass, plenty of clarity. I actually had a JBL subwoofer in my first car back in the day, and uh, I thought that was pretty darn cool. But yeah, that's an incredible sound system for this thing. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Sequoia in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But believe it or not, a surround view monitor there to the right also coming standard for all trim levels across the board. Not the highest quality camera out there compared to some of the competition, but it's massive and it takes up the whole screen and that isn't always the case. So I like it, but as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags do come standard, driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children, for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, all that's boring, but also coming standard, Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. That gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, lane tracing assist, road sign assist, the blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert trailer merge warning and front and rear parking sensors then as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the sequoia plenty of space in this thing especially because you can adjust that second row so incredibly much third row passengers really shouldn't have any issues in that third row there and speaking of the third row third row window sunshades that's something you almost never find that's such a rarity i think that's pretty stinking cool plenty of power in this thing plenty of get up and go you're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway I, I also love the interior quality of the capstone i'll put it that way and i want to emphasize that because i think i remember driving one last year that was in the capstone and i don't think the interior quality was anywhere near what this is so i just want to emphasize that but the only thing that's really in the back of my mind when it comes to this is uh your comments for all my previous videos with this same engine you guys put in the comments that you don't know about the reliability because you hear people having issues or yourself has had issues with this particular engine, whether that be in a Sequoia or a Tundra. But I gotta be honest, I can't review reliability in this reviews. And all I have as far as reliability is consumer reports and then to follow what you guys say in the comments. So 
I don't know. That's in the back of my mind now. I don't know about the reliability, but let me know what you guys think of this Sequoia in the comment section below. That's about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.